I want to give a great big shout out. Thank you so, so much to my good brother, Walt, for grabbing that good old Appalachian merch. Thank you so, so much to you and the missus for always watching and enjoying. God bless you both, Kim folk. I love you bunches. You know, way back in these old mountains, ridges, hollers, there's one thing I can say about these old Appalachian mountain witches. They stay true to their word, even after death. Years ago, there's this old farm woman named Minnie Van Sickle. Everybody said was a witch. She lived on a curve in the road in a run-down old farmhouse. It had two barns and a shed on her property. I remember riding down the road at night with my folks when I was just a youngin. As the car would approach the bend in the road where she lived there, the headlights would illuminate her front porch. And sometimes, she'd be sitting on the porch glaring at us as we went around the bend. I once asked my great Aunt Jane about her, and she bluntly replied, she's a witch. Another time, I asked an old farm with her. Lived in her neighborhood about her. This woman was a highly Christian woman. And when I asked her if Minnie was a witch, she hesitated and replied, Well, she's done some strange things. And that's all she said. Now, her land was once farmed by her husband. But before he died, he sold off all the farm ground to a man named Nicholson. But he kept the house and the barns and about six acres of the land. Nicholson was one of them fellers who had a lot of money and bought up land to eventually develop into houses. However, he never moves fast and sometimes it's years before he does anything with the ground he buys. For instance, I used to squirrel hunt on this land, and today there's a big old fancy home right there where I used to sit and shoot old gray squirrels. Well, apparently, even though Minnie no longer owned her farm ground, she would still try to run people off of it. I've heard men talk of being back there in their woods early of the morning, waiting on the squirrels to start moving. When almost as, as if she come out of nowhere, Minnie would be standing there glaring at them and pointing with a bony finger. Get off my land. Nicholson tried talking to her, but it didn't do no good. She continued to harass hunters and root diggers right up till she died. She told Nicholson, You'll never get to use my land for anything, Jim Nicholson. I'll see to it. When Minnie died, somebody burned down her house. And later on, somebody come and burned down her barns and sheds. Nothing's left but a crumbling old spring house down the slopes from her home. When she died, having no heirs or anything, her six acres come up on tax sale, and a man named Doherty bought it. And to this day, has done nothing with that property. So in the years after Minnie's death, her former farm began to Spring up pockets of marshy ground. Nobody had an explanation for it. But year after year, the ground become more swampy and worthless for anything but hunting. Then over the years, 
it even became too difficult to hunt in. And here and there in the growing swamp, you can find a deer stand that now sits out in the water, still attached to a tree. The place is now just a home for muskrats, coons, bobcats, and stuff. Now, being a trapper, I asked Nicholson for permission to trap on it, which he granted. He just gave me a warning to watch out for sinkholes and quicksand. The first year I trapped it, I did pretty good. But he was right about them sinkholes. I once found a muskrat lodge built over what looked like a deep sinkhole. So I cut a pole and run it down in the water. I went down at least eight foot. Couldn't touch bottom. Twice I broke through the surface and sunk up over my knees. And was lucky both times to have a partner trapping with me. But one of the creepiest things was finding fence posts sticking up out of the swamp with the fence wire still stapled to it. That old land sure did have a gloomy air to it, and it still does. What made me finally quit trapping the place weren't the lack of critters nor the swampy ground. It was the handprints. One morning I was headed back to the swamp to check my traps, and I noticed a white handprint on a tree right where I went in. More than that, as I followed my line, I began to notice more handprints on more trees. Now, I didn't touch them, but it seemed to be made of some sort of powder or something. And this kept going on, and I ain't even gonna lie to you, it spooked me. I figured somebody was watching me. So one morning, I got the idea and I entered the swamp at a point where I'd never gone into it before. The next morning, there was white handprints on the trees. Well, that right there was quiet enough for me. Well, I quit trapping there and I won't enter the place anymore. I took some photos from around the place, but I'll never set foot in that swamp there again. Old Nicholson's gone now, and his son owns the grounds. Says it's a worthless piece of property. It has been classified as a wetland, so it can never be used for anything except from waterfowl and the critters that live in it. And just maybe, just maybe, the spirit of an old witch who to this day won't let nobody use her land. Well, folks, I want to thank you kindly for tuning in and listening. Hope you really enjoyed that and really want to thank our good brother Alligator Horse for sending that in. One right there, I ain't gonna lie to you, send a chill up me. It was a mighty good one. Thought you folks would enjoy it. His link will be in the description box below. Also, I'd like to thank you folks for coming back and listening, enjoying, and just I can't thank you enough for sharing me out all over the place like you do in your Facebook groups and stuff like that and just telling your friends and family about me. You really don't know what that means. If you're new, please subscribe. Hit that old like button. That helps me out a whole lot. I go live on Wednesdays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's free to subscribe and it's free to come into the chat and say howdy. Or... If you don't want to chat, just tune in, kick back, and enjoy. It's a blessing having all of you. Well, I love you bunches. God bless you and your kin. And have a good one.